Bears to keep the game alive. Over the middle, it is tipped and intercepted. Back on his feet to return his crib on the block, and Arlington gets the ball back with 108 to play. KNC Masterpiece back here on 105.3 The Fan. Right now in studio with this College Football Hall of Famer, national champion, current coach of the XFL champion Arlington Renegades as we move into the new league. It is Bob Stoops. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Kevin. Good to be with you, uh, Mike and Corey. Uh, understand I'm with the number one. You're damn right about <laughs> that. Day day show, yeah. Daytime show in uh, in the Dallas area, right? That is a fact. Thank you very I'm much. I'm just bragging on you. That's Thank all. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate it because yeah. I was worried this would be contentious because, you know, Mike's a tech guy. I went to Texas A&M, so... Corey is going to be your biggest yeah, ally. Lifetime Sooner here. fan. I just uh, landed at UNT, so All that's right. how it goes. Well, you, I'll side with you, Corey. These guys, <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to say anything about these guys. I others. appreciate they're, they're it. They're good guys. They're it's, so good people. Yeah, we, you know, we deal with them. Yep, that's right. <laughs> it's been a tough run for some of us in football. Is I asked this about, we talked to Daryl Moose Johnston a couple weeks ago. My proposal, and I want to know if you would support this, is what should have happened with the new league is you should have taken your game coming up on February 24th and it was winner take all. So if y'all win, all the XFL teams make up the new league. And if you lost all the USFL teams would have made up the new league. That would have popped a hell of a rating. That would have been fun, but uh, it's going to be great as it is. You know, we've got two, two leagues uh, two, that merged USFL and XFL brought four teams from each league. So we're going to have the XFL division. It'll be Arlington Renegades along with uh, San Antonio and uh, D.C. and St. Uh, Louis. St. Louis. And then the USFL will be the other division and all under the umbrella of the UFL. So it's uh, it'll be exciting, fun. It's going to be, I, I think the people are going to really appreciate the talent. Now that you've eliminated eight teams, now you got the best of the players from from 16 teams down to eight. You know, when you had two different leagues, so it's it's going to be competitive. It's going to be exciting and fun. I'm kind of curious with with, with coaching this kind of group of guys because in the NFL, it's like an absurd amount of money that these guys are making. In college, there's a lot of motivation either to get to the next level or to stay in school. Coaching this this kind of group, what's the difference for you? There, it's a it's a blast. Uh, you know, these guys just as you as you said, they they still want to get to the next level, which is the NFL. A lot of them are still in a great place to to get there, talented enough. You think of the – just think of the last five, ten guys cut from every NFL team. That's who these guys are. And they're, those are good football players. And so, the you know, so they – and they're still hungry to get back to that level. So they're really easy to coach. They're going to do anything you want them to do. They pick up the game fast because they've all played so much football before that, you know, they pick up the schemes and, and you know, and you're – techniques really quickly and uh, a lot of fun to coach and uh it's real enjoy it's it's enjoyable you know i don't i don't have any babysitting you know i, I got i got one rule there are no rules just don't be a jerk there you go <laughs> be, a, be a good guy be a good teammate and we're all gonna we're all gonna enjoy this experience you know that's that's what we're after and it's 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 fun to coach them and do you say jerk or is that a sanitized version of that word <laughs> 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna stay out of trouble here this okay. one day while I'm on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the I'm really curious what the merger process was like because there have been ups and downs for both the USFL and the XFL prior to the UFL forming. And I get that it formed at least partially out of necessity. How did you track all this knowing that you probably weren't going to be able to do anything about it until all was said and done? Yeah, that's basically it because we were they weren't asking me for my opinion, you know, right. so it's it's all the top bosses, the owners, the ownership group, which for us consisted of Dwayne Johnson uh, and uh, Danny Garcia and Redbird Capital. And uh, and they were involved. I think the positive out of it all is now, it, it you know, we were kind of ABC, ESPN covered by all of them. The USFL was Fox, but now we're all together. So now to me, it's going to be there's going to be a lot more viewership. Uh, not competed against each other for, you know, for time. So all of that together, I, I think it's a really strong ownership group, and I, I really believe it's going to be uh, very positive. 
How many general managers call you up during the season, at the end of the season, and say, hey, tell me about this guy? I liked him on your team, or I liked what he did, or hey, I, I'm I'm looking for this position. How many kind of phone calls do you get like that during a season? When 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 I was at OU a lot, and, <laughs> and, and always inevitably it would be in the last couple of weeks ahead of the draft. Mm-hmm. And I, I tell this story on my I have an app, so I, I I told this on on my app last week. Inevitably, the day before the draft or two days before the draft, I'd get a call, and it's a Foxborough number. And I don't, I don't answer any numbers I don't recognize, but I might, I guarantee it's Coach Belichick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So sure enough, I'll answer it, and it's somebody for him. He, he's right in the next room, and and he'll he'll have a list of not only the guys on our team that he, that he's looking at, team other guys we competed against and played against at other schools. He wants to know what we thought of them, and and so thorough, and uh, and. Uh, and then he would say, well, these two guys, I, I'm, I know we, we're not going to draft, but tell me about them. So, you know, so, so when someone else drafts them, he knows what they're, wow. what they're about. I mean, he, he takes notes on everything. So inevitably, he was one that would always uh, give me a ring and, and want to talk about our players or players, you know, that he knew I, we were familiar with. And it's important for you to be, to be honest with those guys, not just trying oh, yeah. to sell them a player so that your university or your team looks good. You're trying. You're. You want them to have that rapport, right? Like, Absolutely. Guys think, oh, you're just always gonna talk glowingly. If you have, if you've been a problem, I'm not gonna lie, because now that Coach Belichick calls me next week and I lied to him, or next year, <laughs> yeah. he's not gonna want to call me and talk about the guy who did everything the right way. Yeah. So point being, you know, we're very. Emph- I was always emphatic that we're gonna always stick up for you. But to whatever degrees do you you earn or don't earn, you know we're we're not going to lie to people on on maybe the, some of the problems some guys have had. You just have to face them. Since you're talking about Belichick, are you excited about the prospect of him being your neighbor in a couple more days <laughs> <laughs> down at AT and T Stadium? Listen, I I uh, hated for all the Cowboy fans that really do. I've always made it a point. You know, wherever I have been as a coach, I always root for that local team. You know, so. Mm-hmm. Being here all these years and right up the road in in Oklahoma, I've always been since I've been here rooting for the Cowboys. And uh, yeah, I just feel bad. You know, it was just a tough game the other day, and hate it for the fans for sure. Besides the national championship win that you had, what's the win you're most proud about in your career? Um, I'm assuming national championship might be the one, but if yeah, it's not, of course the dominance it is. Of over course. Texas, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say two things. Would uh, I would say all the the Big Twelve championship games. Um, those aren't easy, you know. I we won uh, fortunate, and we won ten in my time there, and we were ten and one in those in those games that decided the championship, whether it be in the Big Twelve game or a few years. We didn't have it, but we got down to the end like with Oklahoma State and won it. So being 10 and 1 in those Big 12 championship games is, is, uh, it's not easy. What's the game in your life that you still think about and go, I just, that one hurts so much? Yeah, that would have been the national championship with USC. I mean, they, they drilled us and I, you know, we were, we just, you know, give them all the credit. Uh, but I just know we, we weren't as, good as we could have been. And that that's on me. You know, I've always been crushed uh, by that because I didn't feel we gave it our best effort and for whatever reason. And uh, you know, it's, you know, so that, that always pains me. I know why it's the right thing to say, give them all the credit, but does that ever hurt you inside when you really want to be like, Oh, the hell with USC. We could have won that game if we go back and did it again. No, they were a special team, so you got to give them that. But, uh, but again, I, I, you know, not making it a game of it and not putting our best foot forward. Uh, you know, that's that's what hurts. You know, you could, you could take, you know, losing in a tough fashion, but when you feel you've at least given it close to your best, but when you haven't, that that's that's what's hard to to take. You had guys. AD, you know, Roy Williams, all these names that come through the program. Did you keep up with their careers beyond? Like, did you watch them with that same passion? Like, that's my guy right there. All the time. I always watched our guys when you could. You know, you're so busy during the year. But, you know, you'll you'll see the highlights or someone will come in and, you know, update you on who's doing what. And I still do. You know, a lot of these guys that are still in the league, 
you know, I recruited, you know, the Oklahoma, you know, the guys that have been playing a while now. So I'm always watching them and, and uh, looking for them and want them to do well. Uh, Neville Gallimore was just yep. at uh, our spring or, or a game. Oh, it was a bye week. And I ran into Neville here just a few weeks ago in between, you know, on their bye week. So anyway, I, I, I root for all our guys. So Hall of Fame coach Bob Stoops joining us right now. So you're coaching the Arlington Renegades right now. And unfortunately, I played a lot of AAA baseball, which I would have played a lot more Major League Baseball, but a little bit. And the thing about AAA baseball is nobody really wants to be there. They want to be in the Major Leagues. But the manager of the team has to get those guys to, I understand everybody's goal here, but has to get that also those guys to play as a team. And I'm assuming it can kind of be the same here with the Arlington Renegades. So how is your job maybe a little bit different at OU or maybe similar that you're taking these guys, they still want to play football, they want to play in the NFL, but you also want to get them to play as a team? Yeah, that, that's a challenge, uh, you know, but usually in football, it's the ultimate team sport. There's so many, you know, 11 guys on the field for each team at the same time. Uh, there's a lot going on. And and I always say in football, no one's going to do it theirself. Basketball, you might take over a game. You, a pitcher, a pitcher can take over a game. But in football, that's not happening. A quarterback can't take over a game if he's on his back. Uh, on and on. You know, you you're there. it's the ultimate team sport. And, and guys that played this amount uh, – amount of football know that like we're not getting anywhere by ourselves so you know buy in there's there's you know enough to go around for everybody and uh you know and that's you know that's what you teach and and uh you know it last year really wasn't a problem we uh end up winning the championship and uh guys were really together you know throughout uh, especially the back half of the year we had a a quarterback change, Luis Perez came in for us. Yeah. And you talk about team chemistry, for whatever reason, he galvanized the team. Guys, you know, he's the one that brought it all together. And we were kind of fractured ahead of that. And and maybe I didn't do such a good job early in the year. But when he came on board, everybody got on the same page and was really a, a lot of fun to be on the field coaching with those guys. Now, y'all start training camp February 24th, the champion versus champion match that we talked about Saturday, March 30th. I know a lot of this kind of addresses that, but what would you tell people if they're like, yeah, maybe I'll go check it out? Like, what what would you tell people? Come check this product. Out. Well, it's a fun product. These guys are good football players. It's football you're used to watching. Uh, you know, the, the only we had a couple subtle changes, like instead of. What's more boring than an extra point, right? Right. After a touchdown. Well, with well, us, you go for one, two, or three. Yeah. So that that's, you know, you're getting a football play, not, not a not a kick. So, um, you know, a little bit more excitement that way. All the venues, you know, they, they got their beer sales. And, it, it, you know, by March 30th, the weather's going to be better. You know, last right. year we started in February. And it's fun football. You know, Choctaw Stadium, all the people there do a great job. Fun place to to go watch a game and uh you got texas live right across the street yes. when, when you get hungry so uh so anyway it's 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 a fun venue we appreciate well i have one okay, one for question for, for were you shocked that uh coach saban retired not really um not that i had any insight whatsoever but coach saban 72 and and he's done it at the highest level for such a long time that at some point you know it's and and that's where i got to where I, I want my own space and my own time, and I, I don't want to have to to answer to somebody every day of my life. And and at some point, you just want to want to do what you want to do. And I, you know, so Coach Saban's in great health at Pierce, so he he's going to go. He's a he's a really good golfer, so I'm sure he'll get get some more of that. So uh, he's been a long time friend, so I'm happy for him and he and his wife Terry, and wish him wish him the best. Man, we wish you the best. Thank you for coming up. Thank you for bringing the XFL trophy yeah, was awesome. up here as well. Hopefully we'll have a new, different bit of hardware to bring up yeah. after this next season. Well, thanks for having me with the number one daytime show out here in the Dallas area. Boom. <laughs> there you go. It's nice. And everybody who's interested, theufl.com. You can get all kinds of additional information, scheduling. You can get ready for that March 30th game. Everything you need there, theufl.com. Bob Stoops, thank you very much. Good thank sir. you, guys.